Good morning, YouTube. Here with some coffee and correct grammar. I don't know if you've had your coffee and correct grammar today, but if you haven't, let's get some in you. Decided to pick a topic when I do these things and talk about the topic, as there aren't very many grammar questions that come up in the chat. So, what I'm going to talk about today is just some of the reasons why positions and lodials are used to position a fact with correctness and what that means. And in order to figure that out for yourself, you could simply go to Google and basically ask Google, what is a prepositional phrase? What do prepositional phrases do? Because in the fiction, that's what it would be called, a prepositional phrase for the claim. It contains a preposition and it, contain, it can contain a noun or a verb, like you could say in time would be a preposition and a noun. Or you could say in the time, which would be a prepositional modifier and a noun. But in correct sentence structure, it's formatted a different way. The preposition is actually called a position. The, load, the uh, article, the modifier, an article is a modifier, by the way, is called a lodial. Meaning L-O-D-I-A-L. Not allodial, A space lodial is what I'm talking about. And then you have your fact. So that concept has taken into the uh, quantum grammar technology and given closure as to what those mechanics are. But just like everything else in correct sentence structure, it's based upon a fiction concept. So what is a prepositional phrase? Now, I use the word positional, right? A positional is a five. You just put the PRE in front of it. And what that means is you're pre-positioning whatever comes after it. It's literally telling you in the fiction that you're pre-positioning a verb or a noun. It's very simple. A prepositional phrase is a group of words consisting of preposition, its object, and any words that modify the object. Most of the time, a prepositional phrase modifies a verb or a noun. There are two types of prepositional phrases called adverbial phrases and adjectival phrases. So that's where the concept comes from. That's what the concept is rooted in. And before you say, oh, it's based on a fiction concept, guess what? That's all we have to work with is fiction grammar, okay? So what correct sentence structure does, the unique thing behind the technology is it takes fiction concepts that work. And instead of saying it can either be this or it can be that, correct sentence structure gives one word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. So the position lodial fact phrase has one function, and that is to position the fact. That's it. It doesn't modify anything. The positional denotes uh, the sequencing, what its function is in the sentence, whether it's a cause, concern, possessive, or authority. Four positionals, four of, with, and by. The lodial, it's been said, denotes ownership. It just tells what fact it is. Is it the fact? Is it my fact? His fact? Each fact? Her fact? Their fact? Whatever it is. That's how it works. And then you have your fact, which must not contain a particle of negation, meaning a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word is a particle of negation. You wouldn't put a past tense fact in there, an ed, you wouldn't have a gerund modifier in there, an ing, nothing like that. 
And if you have a compound fact, you still wouldn't include past tense words, future tense words, or particles of negation. It requires a, a very meticulous um, work ethic to create these things. A lot of people don't want to take the time to do it, but that's how it is. It's correct sentence structure. And that's what I teach. And that's what I'm showing you here right now. Hello, Hans. And uh, hello, Fernando. Glad you could come on. So that is the basic idea behind the prepositional phrases, the position lodial phrase that comes in front of the fact and correct sentence structure. Now on to the way the actual sentence is constructed. It's based on logic. You need two points with which to draw a straight line. Because if you just have one point, you don't know where that line's going. There's no direction to it. You have to add direction as author and authority of the contract. And everything is contract. So. You need two points with which to draw the straight line. Here's one, here's one. This point is the cause of your correct sentence structure. For the cause. This next point would be the concern of your correct sentence structure. Of the concern. For the cause of the concern. Now we have two points. We've established the geometric level playing field of contract communication using correct sentence structure. Now we can put our motion in there, which is the verb. The verb, the verb singularity or plurality is based upon the singularity or plurality of the fact in the cause section of the correct sentence structure. The first position lodial fact phrase is the cause. So for the cause is singular. So therefore the verb would be is. There are two verbs meaning singular and plural, is and are, depending upon the plurality or singularity of the cause, the fact in the cause. And that verb must be positioned correctly after those two points. For the cause of the concern is. You can't have for the cause is. You have to have two because you have to establish that line first. Before you walk, you know, when you walk across a shaky ground or whatever, you don't know where you're going. You have to establish where you're going. You have to direct it as author and authority of the contract. And as an added incentive to do this, if you don't put two position lodial fact phrases and two position lodial fact phrases only in front of the verb, your mathematical interface will fall apart. Your sentence will not maintain the same value forwards as it does backwards. So then after the verb comes the possessive and with is possessive. For the cause of the concern is with the possessive of the concern with the possessive by the authority. That's a basic correct sentence structure right there. Now you could shorten it as long as you keep two positional lodial fact phrases in front of the verb and two position lodial fact phrases after the verb, but they have to be very specific position lodial fact phrases. For the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, by the facts. And then backwards, for the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, by the facts. And that is the basic method and reason behind the technology of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, how the prepositional phrases work within the construct. And there are only four prepositions, four of, with, and by. And that's what hinges the mathematical interface. For is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. So when you read it forwards, it's for, of, with, by. When you read it backwards, by becomes for, with becomes of, and so on and so forth. Let me look at these comments here. 
Do you look at documents and do you parse a syntax grammar for people? Yes, I look at documents every day. And do I parse a syntax grammar for people? I'm doing it right now for people. So the answer is yes. Why do you make the 666 so often today? Why do I make the 666? Why do you perceive the 666 so often today? That's up to you. I'm not one of those people that reads a lot into numerology and things like that. That doesn't have any practical value in my life and it doesn't affect me. Um, I've studied it in the past, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't make any difference to me. I mean, if it bothers you, I mean, that's your perception. That's the value. The value of something is what someone into it. So if that's the value you're going to put into whatever, I assume my hand gestures, then that's on you, man. Or woman, uh, Eric the Viking. Okay. Do you charge and where can you be reached? I, I can guess that this person right here has never watched one of my videos. This is probably his first one. So therefore, if you watch the trailer of my YouTube channel, which should be the first video you see if you click on my homepage, I discuss exactly how you can reach me. I do provide correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar workshops for those who apply for them. But first, you must email me. And then after that email, if you respond back to that email, I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. In the email that you send me, I ask that you provide your correct full name. You know my name. You know who I am. I ask the same consideration of you. So if you share your correct name and you request a workshop, I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video console. I will provide the venue as you are asking to come aboard my vessel. If you agree to that, then we will look at each other eye to eye, face to face, and we'll find out if this is what you want to do. I'd be more than happy to teach you. Any questions regarding these workshops would be asked and answered during the consultation and not before. Because I find these things must have a rule one, rule equal performance. And this is not really a rule one, rule equal performance here uh, in the comments and stuff because I can't see you. I don't even know who you are. I just know you have some <laughs> ESP1239. I don't know what the hell that is. So you see what I'm saying? If you contact me and we can, you know, contract communication between two men or man and woman or whatever it is, uh, then we'll do that. So it's jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Matter of fact, I will put that in the comments here. So 666 on my screen. What are you talking about? I don't understand. I don't see 666 on my screen. You said you see 666 on my screen, but I'm looking at my screen and, and I don't see it. Suverin X. Well, that's interesting. If you start watching my videos uh, in the order that they were published. Wow. I feel bad for you, man. <laughs> I can't. I make a video. I put it out there. I don't watch it anymore. I really don't like to watch myself at all. So that's where I'm very grateful for students and for friends that will come on and tell me, hey, Jason, you, you made a mistake here in this video or whatever. I'm very grateful for that because uh, I take the video down or I correct it, you know. But I don't like to go back and watch my videos, except when I'm making them up to the point where I invest those hours in creating the videos and editing them. And then once I publish it, I let it go. I don't think about it anymore. It took a lot for me to uh, actually get in front of a camera and make these videos to start off with. So you can definitely probably see how awkward I was. Not now, but I was really awkward at the beginning back in 2018. <laughs> okay, so the back, back to the grammar. So that's the background on the prepositional phrase, how that works. And I'll give an overarching view of the whole thing of correct sentence structure, my claim that the cor everything in the correct sentence structure is based on a concept from the fiction because that's all we have to work with. I mean, that's how children learn through imitation. Children imitate what they 
witness around them. So that's how they learn to speak through adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, whatever form that may take, whether it's English, German, uh, Danish, Spanish, whatever, Chinese, it's still adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, Sumerian, bunch of pronouns, <laughs> um, Sanskrit, whatever it is, it's not correct sentence structure, but correct sentence structure is based on concepts drawn from that. And the best example I can give you of that it, uh, has to do with like the live life claim. In the fiction, you have a birth certificate. In the fact, you have a live life claim. In the fiction, you have a passport. In the fact, you have a sea pass sea treaty. Things like that. So that's kind of like how the grammar works. It's all based on fiction concepts and stuff. If you look at uh, the way punctuation is used in correct sentence structure, it's basically the same concept that the fiction used. Like a period is still a full stop. A period is a period. It's a full stop in the fiction. It's a full stop in, in the fact. The colons, if you look, they, they do still maintain sort of the same meaning in the fact as they do the fiction. Because if you see like a, a definition in a, on a Google dictionary or something, it'll have the word and then it'll have a full colon, which means that what comes after it is related to what comes before it. Just the same as in like a, a, a clock, you put a colon between the numbers, you know, say if it's 0, 8, colon, 5, 5, it's for the 08 of the 55, five, you know, you can read it that way if you want to, although there's no space between the colon and the five. So to me, if I'm looking at that, that is not correct. It just looks like a big pronoun to me. 08 colon 55 five is a big pronoun to me. In order for it to be correct, it would have to look like something like this. So it's for the 08 of the 55. Five. Colon, military term, fact. What's your closure on that, Hans? I've never heard that before. Before I've heard colonel, K, or, I'm sorry, C-O-L-O-N-E-L, -E I think. But I've never heard C-O-L-O-N as a military term. Matter of fact, I'll look that up right now. That's interesting. I never heard that before. Let's look up the etymology of colon, actually. Colon, punctuation mark consisting of two dots, one above the other, used to mark grammatical discontinuity less than indicated by a period. Part of a verse or poem, large intestine, <laughs> of course. But you know what? It's interesting. And this would be something if you had to create a correct sentence structure contract and you use colon to give closure to the symbol of the two dots. And then you also have to use the word colon as in an organ. There's a Greek form that starts with a K, K-O-L-O-N. So what I would do if I had to use that in a correct sentence structure contract, because it's one word, one meaning, I would use C-O-L-O-N as the uh, punctuation closure. And then I would use the K-O-L-O-N to give closure to the, the organ. Easy solutions. I see nothing about it being a coming from military though. And the earliest one I can come back to is the 1540s. So Hans, if you could share a source or something like that, or maybe email me later about it, I'd love to read the, the history on that. You know, I've never, oh, I see. Because in the fiction, there's a semicolon, right? But in correct sentence structure, there's no semi anything. It's either full or it's not there. This cup is not a semi cup, it's a cup. So I wouldn't call it a full cup. Because if we give closure to it, yes, it's full. It's, it's topped off. It's got a value bank to it. You can't add to it. 
can't take away from it. It is what it is. So you wouldn't call it a full cup or this mouse. It's not a semi mouse. It's a. It's not a full mouse. It's just a mouse. So that's why I wouldn't use full colon uh, in my correct sentence structure. Now in the fiction, it works fine because if you use semicolons in your adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, written babble, I mean that that's up to you. Latin spelling. Okay, I'm going to go to my Latin dictionary then and see if I can find what you're talking about. I really wish that YouTube had a screen sharing function. Um, or if it does, I, I don't know how to use it. I'm not most technically gifted. Okay, so... I looked up the entire word colon, C-O-L-O-N, and it just says the colon, or Colona is a countrywoman. Colonia is a colony. So that's interesting. So now let's look up colony and see what that is. A colony Late 14th century, ancient Roman settlement outside of Italy. A colony is a settled land, farm, landed estate. Uh, comes from, and this is the earliest meaning, Proto-Indo-European root, K-W-E-L, which means revolve, move around, sojourn, dwell. People from home. I still don't see where it would be military, although I could see how perhaps later on it would get that meaning. But for me, I go to the earliest nativity root mean, and if it picked up a military connotation later on, that holds no value in my construct because I avoided all contracts with military. So it doesn't mean shit to me. Pardon my language. But I can see how it might be construed that way because of colonial. Let's look up Alono, chief commander of a regiment of troops, 1540s. Yeah, see, that came later. And actually, if you go to the nativity root mean of Colono, colonel, the military one you're talking about, Hans, it comes from the Proto-Indo-European root K-E-L, which means hill. So if you're called a colonel, you're a hill. Man, English is so goofy sometimes. Could I find a job with my correct sentence structure knowledge? I don't know, Eric. Are you a good worker? Do you have good work ethic? I can't tell you what you can or can do with it. I guess the first step would be to learn it. And once you learn it, then maybe, you know, you can. It's like asking, you know, someone, you know, could I find a, could I find a job? Uh, driving, well, first you have to learn how to drive, and then you can go from there and find out if you can get a job with it. See, I try, just like correct, just like I did with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, I like to take everything and break it down to its simplest components, simplest logical components. The way we're trained, and I mean we as in I'm including everyone, because I haven't seen anyone trained otherwise, we're all programmed to assume things. We're all programmed to have others telling us what, he, what we should or shouldn't do all the time. You should do this. Probably this. What's that called? Unsolicited advice? Now, if I come to you and I ask you, would you share your counsel with me? And then I would present a scenario all the details so that you can employ judge mechanics, rule one, rule equal. I give you the whole scenario. Then I ask you your opinion. Could you give me some counsel on what, what you would do if you were in my shoes? I'm asking you for a different angle that perhaps I can't see, but I'm asking you it's by consent. I mean, 
If one goes around telling people, you should do this, you need to go do that. You're trespassing because no one's asking you. <laughs> right? Let's say, hold up, hold up. Let's ask the world first if the world wants to be saved because maybe the world doesn't want to be saved. Hey, we need to wake everybody up. Hold up. I know I don't like to be woke up. When I'm sleeping and someone comes in and wakes me up, no, I get pissed. No, don't wake me up. I'll wake up when I'm ready. It's my choice. See what I'm saying? Those things are trespassing. It's the psychology behind this grammar that you don't trespass. The only thing you do is create an Aegis, A-E-G-I-S, a safeguard for your construct that stops the trespass of these people who are trying to tell you what you should or shouldn't do or trying to mandate what you should do, um, what you have to do, rights. I mean, come on, rights? There's not a goofier concept in the world than rights. I have my rights. Let's go out and protest. Let's start a protest to get our rights back. What's a protest? Besides being a no test, a protest is a bunch of people going out there crying and whining to their authority figures to change what the authority figures are doing. And if they cause enough problems, the authority figure will be like, ah, let's throw them a bone. Sure. We'll do what you say and they'll do some sort of concession and then everything will be fine again for a while until the next protest. Protest is basically begging, pleading like you do in court. You're pleading. You're praying, please. <laughs> I sent you an email with my full name. Well, Silver and X, I appreciate that. I get dozens of emails, okay? So I don't know how to connect what your correct name is with your nom de guerre here, so I have no idea. I can guess that I corresponded with you, and I can guess that I offered you a consultation. Now, again, I can't connect your uh, pseudonym here with your correct name, so I don't know. If you accepted that, I don't even know if we've even spoken. I'd have to guess that we didn't because I would probably remember that you were Suverin X if we actually saw each other face to face. And if I don't remember, I apologize because, again, I get a lot of emails. I live like a hermit because it's not welcome. Because not welcome in this world. Are you sure it's the world that doesn't welcome you? Because I find the world is, is very, I mean, once you... How can I put this? This has nothing really to do with grammar, but your but volition. I work well with the world. I grew up on a farm, and I spent my, you know, years when I was like from third grade until you know all through high school, just walking by myself in the woods all day long, sometimes at night. So I am comfortable being in a forest with wild animals around and, and I know how to survive and things like that in those conditions. It doesn't frighten me in the least. So I exist very well with the world. I'm very congruent with the world. It's just certain other humans that trespass that I need to use correct sentence structure with. Uh, and by humans, hue is color, right? And so man, man is a species. So certain colored species, which is a goofy concept to begin with. Because vessels come in all shapes and sizes. And once you start thinking in terms of color, you're off in the fiction, man. You're way off in the fiction. Am I welcome in your world? I don't, I don't have a world, Eric, because I don't claim ownership of anything. This, is, this vessel right here, I did not create it. I don't own it. I'm a steward of it. So there is no such thing as my world. 
you are welcome here on this vessel as long as you're polite and observe etiquette. And as long as you're here to learn grammar, you're more than welcome to be here. I once had the term and condition that everyone who boarded this vessel, this one, had to use a correct name. But I realize a lot of people out there are scared. They don't want to use their correct name on the internet for whatever reason. They don't want that level of accountability. So I kind of backed off on that and was like, okay, anybody can come on here. But it is um, a term and condition to email me that you use your correct name and take authority over your words. Whatever grammar you're using, you have to take authority of them and share your full name. Otherwise, I will not contract with you in any way, shape, or form. And everything is contract. So by contract, I mean respond to you. I probably will respond to you once and ask you for your correct name. And if you do not share it, then you just go in the trash bin. Because that is that is not rule one, rule equal. You know who I am. You know my name. I just ask the same consideration. It's basic etiquette and consideration. All right, Suver, and then if I didn't correspond back to you, then that means I did not get it. And believe me, I tracked my spam folder as well, and I didn't see anything in my spam folder. Eric the Viking, be careful with any Viking program. Vikings are historical full fiction for toddlers watching Netflix. And it's also a gerund. <laughs> Everybody, if you want to learn up about things, you know, the concepts that uh, Hans is sharing here, check out his channel. Uh, you know what, Hans? I'm going to throw your channel up here. Let me get a link to it, and I'll throw it in the comments. Hans is a, a friend of mine. We've certainly had our ups and downs over the years, but we've been, I like to think of him as a good friend. I got much love for him. Super, super knowledgeable man uh, about all sorts of things outside of the grammar. He's like got, he talks about the weather, what causes the weather, the psychology behind the way we think and how it affects the weather and how it affects our environment. And it really, it really does come down to volition. I mean, seriously, just like the grammar, the most important thing is the volition. It's the same thing with everything else in your environment. It's the volition. Let me throw your channel up here. All right, here is a link to Hans's channel. Check it out. It's a lot, a wealth of information over there. And Hans does uh, other things as well. I'll let you figure that out. Do JK, I am in Michigan. Where are you located? JK, if you send me an email, we can talk about that in the confidential. I don't give out my location to uh, anyone I don't have a trust count with for safety reasons. But if you email me and you set up a video consultation with me and agree to my terms and conditions, I'll be more than happy to answer these questions for you. But first, you have to email me. Jason Matthew G17 at gmail.com. If you scroll back through the comments, I put it in there. Unless encrypted P2P is made. What does that mean? What does unless encrypted P2P is made? Private and confidential online is over the internet is nearly impossible. Um, see, this goes into the psychology as well. I have nothing to hide. So if I say something's confidential, it's confidential. If there are people listening in, then they are in violation of rule one, rule equal. And the what I've found is the rules of the cosmos will come into play. I have nothing to hide. So 
I say it's confidential, and I trust that it is confidential, if you and I agree to that. If anybody is spying or listening in, I can't do anything about it anyways. I mean, it's not like I'm trading nuclear secrets or anything like that. It's correct grammar. So, I mean, if you have a problem with it, well, then, you know, I guess that's that's your issue. I don't. If I say it's confidential, it's confidential. And if that confidentiality is broken, of course, on your part, then I would break bulk with you. If I find that it's broken by some third party, um, then I would take steps and measures to safeguard the vessel from further trespass. But up to this point, I haven't had any problems with that other than with the other contract party breaking confidentiality. And then I would just jettison them from my vessel construct. I respect your honesty and transparency in two parties. I'm a beginner student of the quantum grammar that has studied the information for 10 years. You studied quantum grammar for 10 years and you're a beginner? That's interesting. You know, I used to use alias on the internet too. And I find that most people use aliases just so they can, you know, a lot of people, it's like an ad in a movie, right? They're using a different name and they're acting a different way because it's not them. And they feel do that. It's the same thing I find on the internet, that people that don't use their correct name on the internet act differently because they're hiding behind that thing. And I don't mean hiding. Um, yes, I do actually mean hiding. They're hiding behind a nom de guerre. They're not willing to put their correct name up there. They want to be anonymous. It's like, you know, and I'll, I'll use this word, and I'm sure Hans can appreciate this, like those idiots in QAnon or whatever that use that goofy-ass mask <laughs> and say, oh, this is, uh, I got this information from a source in the, in the military that says there's thousands of children being rescued from a ship outside of Los Angeles and blah, blah, blah. Here's my source. And then I'll have some goofy guy on there with his voice disguised and his face all blanked out. I have a high level, I have a source with high level security clearance. I can't say who it is. See, all this stuff is all fiction bullshit because no one is willing to be accountable for the information that they're providing. I'm the exact opposite of that. I'm willing to stand behind what I say. I'm willing to put my face and my name out there to stand behind this grammar and take the Pepsi challenge with anyone. Period. End of story. So if I see that with someone that they use, they don't use their correct name or whatever, you know, that kind of raises a red flag to me. That's why I offer the email venue so that if you do want to be correct in, in contract with me in a correct manner, you can share that with me in the confidential and the email to show me that, yes, you want to participate with rule one, rule equal, honor, grace, peace, neutrality. Is there a video that digs deep into translating sentences into quantum grammar for newbies? Yes, of course. Um, I have over 300 videos on this channel. I invested thousands of hours in creating them. It's contingent upon you to do your homework and study it if you want to learn it. And as far as that goes, I would definitely uh, check out my correct sentence structure playlist. There are three main playlists that have to do with the grammar, correct sentence structure, parse and syntax. So if you're looking to translate, I would look at the correct sentence structure playlist. Thank you, JK. The reason why I created this channel back in 2018 was because, first of all, I didn't see a grammar channel out there that was specifically focused on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And also I found that in those old videos of colon David Eiffel and colon Miller, much respect, honor, grace, and with uh, colon Russell Eiffel and J colon Gould, that they explained how to do things, but they never say why. They never say why a vowel in front of a consonant means no. They never really say, why the sequencing must be the way it is. They never tell you what an adverb is or what an adjective is. Not really. 
they just tell you how to do things repetitively. So I thought, you know, maybe I should fill that void in very short videos because I know in my perception at the time of the internet and viewers were that the attention span of the audience is very short nowadays. People don't watch nine hour seminars. As a rule, they don't watch an hour video. If someone sees a 15 minute video, they might think that's way too long in the world of TikTok, which is three minutes. And some people can't even get through that, right? So I tried to create three to five minute videos giving little bite-sized morsels of this correct sentence structure, showing the why, not only the how, but the why things work the way they do. And, you know, the first year was tough. By December, the end of December of 2018, I only had 100 subscribers. And now I got like, uh, I don't know, 4,500, maybe a little over 4,500. So it's been a slow growth. But that's why I started this channel. And I appreciate your kind words. I'm using Proton email. I used to use Proton, uh, but it just was, for me, it was a pain in the ass. I just used Gmail, as you see. And I've been using it for years, and I've never had any security issues with Gmail. And again, I don't have uh, any reason to hide anything. I will always use anonymous names on social media because I don't trust social media companies. Well, see, this comes down to the psychology of the volition. Just because someone else is untrustworthy, does that mean that you also have to be untrustworthy? Like, if you don't trust a social media company because, I don't know what, they share your data? So does that mean that you also have to be dishonest? and create a name for yourself so that, you know what I mean? It, it's a very fine line there. Although I understand what you're saying. For myself, I don't really, I mean, I used to think that way, but I definitely don't anymore after learning the grammar. I don't care. Because I realize if you have correct volition, I mean, the only thing they can really do is share your fiction, fiction stuff. And that's it. You cannot trespass on a fact. R.J. Gould owns the Stars and Stripes. Eric the Viking, where's your proof? Show me the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contract for the claim that you're making. I use business professional proton. It's close to perfect. The unpaid version was indeed a pain in the butt. I'll have to look into that, Hans. Thanks for sharing that. I was actually thinking of creating my own, uh, my own email address, you know, buying my own domain or whatever. Forgive me for my ignorance, but what is the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar claim for the poll? A live life claim. A claim of the live life. It's basically a document written in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar that contains three live life claim witnesses to the fact that you are who you say you are and a copyright copy claims your correct name. And it gives closure to some facts that you choose to provide about yourself. He doesn't own it then. I'm not saying that, Eric. I'm saying you made the claim. It's not up to me. It's up to you. You're the one that's talking this stuff. So you got to, for the proof of the claim is with the claimant. You have to prove your claim. Not me, you. You brought it up. So I'm asking you, I'm calling you to the carpet. Show me proof of your claim. That's all I'm asking. I'm not claiming anything except to wanting you to prove your claim. Gould owns a big eagle and a place inside the local Freemason Lodge. Can you talk a bit about postal mechanics and how correct sentence structure is applied? First of all, Pete, what is your level of correct sentence structure knowledge? My general rule as a tutor is I teach the grammar. I don't teach postal mechanics. I don't teach flag mechanics uh, unless an individual 
I can certify their correct sentence structure knowledge level on the geometric level playing field. So if you'd like to share a correct sentence structure so that I can get a sense of where you're at with it, I'd be more than happy to share with you uh, some of these things. How do you get the other witnesses to the live life claim? Well, you can invite them to your to an address, a coffee shop, have them all come in. Uh, you can mail it to them and they can mail it back. There's lots of different ways. How do you meet people? How do you meet up with people to contract in a regular way? It's the same thing. Preferably, if possible, I would get people that you trust. Here's the thing, though. I mean, after you autograph a live life claim, it just means that you're witnessing the individual is a live creature. They're a live life claimant. You've witnessed them. You've seen them. You've heard them. You know they are who they say they are. What they do with it afterwards has nothing to do with you. So, you know, I've put my, you know, I've helped people out and autograph their live life claims, and they've gone on to use the grammar in a way that I don't agree with. But that has nothing to do with me. My volition was to witness their live life claim because I feel everyone should have the opportunity to have a live life claim. What you do with the grammar is up to you. The grammar tech is pure. What people do with it is a completely different thing. I am aware of using the postal mailbox as a contract venue. Who is the first and second? Who is the first and second what? Not sure what you mean there. Are you asking me personally who my first and second witnesses are on my live life claim? You mentioned you use the word oite instead of use. Would it be possible to use temporary salvage, salvage for the time of instead? Fernando, I'm not sure what you're what you're asking. Because what you said in quotations, temporary salvage, forward slash salvage for the time of, makes no sense to me in, in terms of correct sentence structure. So I have to ask you what your correct sentence structure knowledge level is. Because from that, I would say that perhaps you're lacking in knowledge of correct sentence structure if you were to suggest using something like that. I salvaged, I did a salvage claim on the word oite. Because it's positive performance, I brought it back into use so that I wouldn't have to use a no contract word like U-S-E. The salvage is open source. You're more than welcome to use it in your correct sentence structure if you want to. I don't own it or anything. And no one challenged me in the year and the day salvage stroke that I put on the salvage. So it's open source to the public. If you want to use it, it's perfectly acceptable to me. If you needed two witnesses, then they needed two and so on. But who are the first two to allow for any witness? I don't know. You'd have to uh, research that yourself. I have no idea. Um, anybody, anywhere. It doesn't have to be correct sentence structure. If, if you and I and somebody else were sitting in a room and we say, hey, you know what? Let's create a document using us three as witnesses. And we'll call it a live life claim and we'll mail it to ourselves as proof and evidence, continuous evidence that you are who you are. I am who I am and you are who you are. And uh, it'll be a contract. I mean, it's easy as that. I'm not sure where you're going with this. Eric, the Viking War Castles channel, Reno event, Black Eye Ritual Watch. And by the way, on a live life claim, you can have as many witnesses as you want, but the minimum is three. One is opinion, two is certification, three is authority. That's why three is the important number. So those three witnesses 
would be two other live life claimants, and then yourself, you would claim yourself as witness. Now, you can have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, however many you want, uh, but three is the minimum for the live, for the uh, correct sentence structure live life claim. I thought they added to be validated by someone else who was with the grammar. That is not correct. You don't have to have closure on the grammar to have a live life claim. My children have live life claims, and they don't know the grammar. I'm the authority of their their contracts, though. The interesting part about it is if you have a live life claim and you don't know the grammar, then you won't be able to use the live life claim, really, because you won't be able to create a correct sentence structure contract. Conceivably, if you create a live life claim for yourself, it's probably going to be from a template from someone that you got or you copied from somewhere, not really knowing. I mean, that's the way I did it. I mean, I got a template. Um, Actually, I got a few templates when I started out in 2017. I got one from Mark Shum Christopher, which at the time I had no idea was incorrect. I had one from uh, David Wynn Miller's book, which if you take it directly from the book, the grammar is not correct. And also Russell J. Gould sent me one. And the grammar was not correct. But I didn't know that at the time. I only found that out a year or two later when I knew what I was doing. I don't know if it's better to create a new unique live life claim, um, but it certainly is an option. I encourage people to create their own live life claims, but you certainly would need closure on the grammar before you would do that. If you're gonna use it for correct sentence structure. Like, for example, on my live life claim, I don't claim a father because I can't prove father as a fact. I claim mother because I can certify that as a fact. I don't claim hair color. I don't claim eye color. I don't claim height. I don't claim weight. Why don't I claim these things? Because these things are constantly changing. Um, normally I weigh perhaps around 200 pounds, but the other day I went to the doctor and I was 210 pounds. So that would be not correct. So I don't claim that on my, my live life claim. My eyes can be brown sometimes. Sometimes they can be hazel. That changes. My hair obviously has changed color in the last few years. So that changes too. The only thing that doesn't change is the condition and state of the being known as my mother. The condition of state of my gender does not change. Male cannot be changed. No matter what I identify as. <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, I claim... I claim stewardship from point of conception. Meaning... Instead of claiming when I actually was physically birthed into the sea of space, I claim from point of conception, from the spark of life when it was first ignited. And I claim all parts, all vessel parts. There's lots of stuff you can do. But again, I'm not a live life claim teacher. Um, first, there must be that for me as a grammar tutor, because that's what I do. This is what I do as a grammar tutor. There must be a foundation of correct sentence structure before I teach anything else. And I'm fully 100% knowledgeable on postal mechanics, flag mechanics, live life claim mechanics, fate rate, volition claim mechanics, C pass, C treaty mechanics, all those things, 12B7 through 12B1, because I've used them. Uh, but for the safeguard of all involved, first, you must establish that you have knowledge, and that's simple judge mechanics. You have to establish that you have correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, knowledge. Well, Eric, the value of something is what you ascribe to it. So if you ascribe the value of complication to life, then that's what it will be for you. Uh, for me, it's actually quite simple. I just boil everything down, distill everything down to its simple, simplest form and try and go from there using, you know, the best I can, uh, doing the best I can, basically.
Okay, what is a CPAS? I actually cover this in one of my videos on my uh, question of the day. So again, this is not something that I really cover. I don't teach CPAS. As again, you have to have a, a certain level of grammar knowledge in order for me to teach anything like that, first and foremost. So to put it in its simplest form, in the fiction, you have a passport. In the fact, you have a CPAS. And I'll leave it at that. And I'll leave it to you if you want to look for that video. It's in the question of the day series that I do. It's in there somewhere. You just have to find it. Do you present contracts to people? And what kind of reaction do you get from people who have zero knowledge that exists? I contract all the time. I guess you must be new to the channel. I don't know if you've watched any of my videos or not, but this is what I do. This is what I do. Been doing it for going on five years. Here's something that a lot of people don't understand. I find. You cannot have a correct sentence structure contract with someone who does not have a live life claim. And what I mean by that is a written contract and correct sentence structure. If you and I were going to contract and you were a live life claimant, you and I would both autograph the bottom of the contract as live life claimants using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. That would be the highest form of contract or however you want to put it. In order for the correct mechanics to be in place, all things being fair, rule one, rule equal. Yes, on paper. So if you have a live life claim, then that means you're familiar with the grammar. So what would your reaction be? I mean, what do you think your reaction would be? I have uh, presented correct sentence structure credentials to different individuals at different ports. And of course they look at it like they don't know what it is. That is why I come in in capacity of tutor because that's what I am. I'm a tutor. And I'm willing to sit there for an hour or two and explain the grammar to them. But most times they don't, they don't want anything to do with it. Once I start talking like that, they just usually either give me what I want or want me to get out of their hair as fast as possible. They once, I mean, they may not know what I'm talking about, but they know that I know what I'm talking about. And, and they get the look on their face like they're, they've suddenly, they're suddenly way out of their depth and they don't want anything to do with me. So you don't bother with people who have no knowledge about the grammar because they can't. No, that's not true either. If you're trespassing on me, then I will use it. You know, bureaucratically, if you're trespassing on me, trying to rip me off in some sort of way, I will use it. But yeah, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. That's why courts, courts don't recognize this and they dismiss or vacate. Because fiction can never meet fact. It's. See, I'm trying to remember back when I was first learning this. And I would ask the same questions that you're asking. And I remember the way I, I couldn't quite grasp it at first. The psychology of it. I was still stuck in a fiction mindset. If you ever decide to study the grammar, uh, Rugen, I think that's how you say that name. And you get a rudimentary closure on it, you, I have to guess, would, would begin to have this sort of comprehension about what I'm talking about. Have you seen a per Yes, I have seen a person. I've seen many persons react to it. I just explained to you how that works. Rugen, if you're serious about the grammar, if you want to, you know, ask me questions, personal questions or whatever, I mean, you can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and we can set up a video consultation. The The email address is up in the uh, the corner there. Um, do you Are you interested in learning this grammar? Is that why you're here?
I see. You're just trying to get a theoretical grasp of it. Well, most people, if I show them a correct sentence structure contract, I mean, it would be like someone writing a contract in, in Russian or in Latin or whatever and showing it to someone who doesn't speak Russian or Latin. I mean, it would be the same thing, sort of. I mean, because it is in English, they're going to recognize the words because they speak English, but the way it's formatted, they're not really going to understand it. Are there any visual elements or symbols that are equivalent of correct sentence structure that you can be used in conjunction with designing documents? I don't understand what you, what you mean by that, Pete. I did a few weeks ago, but I didn't want to waste your time with the video interview because I just couldn't dedicate the time. Uh, Rugen, I do not participate with this concept of wasted time. There is no such thing as wasted time to me. It's all learning experience. It's all valuable to me. So just to put your mind at ease, there's no such thing as wasted time uh, in my construct. I'm still trying to figure out what, what Pete's asking here. Are there any visual elements or symbols that are equivalent? Are you referring to colon mechanics? Or I, I'm not sure what, you, what you're saying there. Keep in mind, the first email, Kuliana, that you get back from me, I'm going to offer you a consultation. It's 10 to 15 minutes. It's a video consultation. I will provide the venue. It is not a workshop. First, we must have the video consultation so we can determine volition. And it is a vetting process. I'm vetting you. You're vetting me. And if that goes well, then we would discuss the terms and conditions of a workshop. But not before. And it must be face-to-face -face in a video chat. Basically, can graphic design elements be used in place of grammar or in concert? As you would be the authority of your construct, that would be up to you to determine. Um, like, for example, the flag is a graphic design element, right? The stamp is a graphic design element. Um... But as far as art, I mean, art is a no contract word right off the bat because art is open to interpretation and correct sentence structure is not open to interpretation. Correct sentence structure is what it is. If you use a symbol in correct sentence structure, you have to give closure to the meaning of that symbol. Like letters are symbols or hieroglyphs, you have to give closure to the words. And if you use a symbol, you have to give closure to that symbol. Just like if you have use a flag, you have to have closure on that flag, the constitution of the flag, what it stands for, blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing with symbols. Everything has closure in correct sentence structure. In certain quantum grammar groups, you are not allowed to enter if you don't have a live life claim. Well, that's... uh. I guess that's contingent upon those groups. I mean, if it's their vessel, it's their terms and conditions. Like, if you want to enter here, you have to have a live life claim. Okay. It's just like another vessel. If you want to enter here, you have to wear a shirt and shoes, or we're not going to serve you. You know, it's just kind of the same thing. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see if I can go back and uh, kind of edit this down into a shorter video to share the grammar knowledge that I used earlier in the, in the chat. But as usual, you know, it kind of turns into not grammar. <laughs> but I do appreciate everybody participating and uh, see you soon.